clowning when I was like 12 years old. I went on a school field trip to Ringling Brothers Barnum and Bailey Circus, and um, it was a school class field trip, and I just saw all these clowns running around the New Haven Coliseum doing all this wild and crazy stuff, and I was like, wait a minute, that's me. And uh, so from the age of 12 on, I knew that I wanted to grow up and become a clown. Specific hey, hey. <laughs> that's my phone. Let me shut it up. I, I don't know what to do. I'm sorry. So I just knew from the age of 12 on that uh, I wanted to be a clown with Ringling Brothers, Barnum & Bailey Circus. And from that point on, I just focused everything on that. I joined a little local clown club up in Connecticut. My parents were very supportive of it. I, uh, I learned to juggle, ride a unicycle, do magic, everything that uh, young aspiring clowns do. And, uh, and every year I'd go back to the circus and I'd buy the program and it would be like my Bible and I'd study the clowns and all of that kind of stuff. It was kind of freaky. I knew every clown, everything about them. Um, and Ringling Brothers had a clown college. It's since closed down. I applied every year at the age of 13, 14, 15, 16, knowing that I couldn't get in, but uh, just wanted to, them to know who old Chris Allison was. Uh, so that when I finally graduated high school and sent in the application that year, that a letter came back that said, all right, already, leave us alone, come to clown college. And so uh, June of 84, I graduated high school. August of 84, I was at clown college. In December of 84, I was traveling with the greatest show on earth. I spent 11 years uh, touring uh, with Ringling Brothers. And what was that? What was that was everything that? I wanted it to be. I mean, I, you couldn't beat it. It, it was um, my first couple of years were like my college years, so I was wild and crazy and wasn't super focused on, on my clowning. Um, and then I, as I toured, I, uh, I, I took my clowning more seriously, focused on on clowning and character and, and all of that. And I was with Ringling for 11 years. I think my first four or five years, I would have what I would just call like a generic August look. Um, and I just realized when I was there, we had 26 clowns. And I just realized I was just one of 26 running around. Um, and so I started to develop this character, a nerd character. Um, and I think in going into my fifth into my fifth year on the road, I made an official change in my clown look. It was a big, you know, you had to write letters to the to the owner of the circus and to the vice president of talent, and uh, you know, see if it was okay with them if I switched my look to this nerd character, and um, they approved everything, and and so I started doing sort of where I my clown now is Bucky, and and it's uh, that's where it all started. And it, it much better for me. The character, I have a lot more fun with it. Very identifiable. Is you know, just it takes me about two seconds to to set myself up with an audience and get them in my corner. with the circus. The, here's the deal. No, the work, um, we're going back a good 20 years. It feels so old. Uh, so it was a little different than it is now, but from when I was there, we did a lot more clowning in the show. We did a, we did a 20 minute pre-show that, that, that was just strictly the clowns. We had clown routines, the last spot in the, the, the pre-show, the come-in we called it, was the blow-off. That was one or two clowns out there. They had the whole arena to themselves. And I did that for a number of years, and that was a lot of fun. And I mean, pretty much it was like, bam, as soon as I finished my bit, the house went dark, the circus started. It was, it was great. Um, so you had a little bit more room to create stuff and perform it. It's a little harder now. But I'm sure it's the same now as it was then. If you're the kind of guy that's just going to sit on your butt and do nothing, you're going to sit on your butt and do nothing. If you're going to take advantage of the fact that you have 100 performers from around the world, you have the best of the best acrobats, the best of the best jugglers, the best of the best of everything, who are more than willing to share with you what they know. I mean, they're there all day anyway, hanging out. So 
a lot of times we would use that spare time to, to learn, to grow, to practice. I mean, I worked with uh, David Larible, who was the clown of clowns, um, for, for years. I, I, I think I traveled with him for five or six years. And um, some of the clowns were envious, jealous of, of the fact that he was the main headline clown. But he was a good friend of mine, and I, I learned a lot from him. Just watching him, you know, he would, he would say things here and there. And it was, uh, I mean, it's a golden opportunity, and I, I took advantage of it. I wish I'd taken more advantage of it. I mean, I really spent a lot of time just having a good time traveling the country, drinking a lot of beer. <laughs> <laughs> um, but as I got older, I, I did take more advantage of it. Did you, did you, what was your next step? Well, it was, I mean, we left the circus on a Sunday. Starting Monday, I was uh, self-employed looking for work. <laughs> um, and we did, we just drove, I think we closed in St. Louis and Jumped in a truck, loaded all my stuff into a truck, um, drove to, to Westchester County and started looking for work and clown, just anything, clowning, um, you name it, shows, strolling gigs, the whole gamut. And uh, it was, it's been good. It's been a, we've been building, building, building. I say we, I met my wife, Jean, at the circus. Uh, she's a clown too. Um, so we started a little company called Cirque du Jour. We, Gene and I, Bucky and JJ, we do sh stage shows, clown shows, we do strolling entertainment, I uh, produce shows, I have a couple of circus tents, you need a circus, go Bucky! Um, uh, we do, we're, we're an entertainment company, we supply accounts, so it's just been building, building, building. Um, and uh, then Coney Island Chris was born. Well, I learned a lot of the sideshow stuff back on Ringling because what would happen is you get 26 guys in a dressing room about the size of this stage and sometimes you're in that dressing room for 18 hours a day, nothing better to do. You start doing crazy things. Um, so that's where I learned to eat glass and do the mental floss, put stuff in your nose, have it come out of your mouth, um, the blockhead stuff, 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 shove stuff. That's a lot for me um, in my nose. Uh, so that was where I learned it all. I never really used it. It was just kind of one of those things I'd pull out once a year at a party. Be like, hey, look, I can eat a light bulb. Um, but I probably, the reality is, is that I turned 40, hit that midlife clown crisis. Didn't know if this is what I wanted to keep doing anymore. Um, and so I guess in a sense, I just tried to challenge myself to, to come up with something new to sort of recharge the batteries. And uh, Coney Island, Chris, was, was the answer. <laughs> Saved me. Um, and it's just, it's, it's like a solo piece that I do. I don't do a whole lot of solo stuff. I've had the crutch of having Gina to do a partner show with all this time. Um, and so it's just, it's me being goofy. Uh, it's pretty much Jerry Lewis collides with Coney Island, just goofy sideshow stuff. I mean, it's real sideshow, but it's done in a comedic way. Um, pretty much whatever can go wrong goes wrong. A little bit of blood, a little bit of pain. It's all good. It's entertainment. <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to kind of get involved with the burlesque scene a little bit. I've done a couple of more burlesque type shows. Um, the uh, Bindle Stips, I, I was part of their cabaret season, um, just pretty much wherever I can get in. It's, it's a little edgier, it's a little rougher with the blood, I mean it's done, like I say, it's done in a comedic way, but I think you still have to be careful with what you're bringing to the little birthday parties. <laughs>